Hello everyone, this is Eddie the Magic Monk doing a quick uh, Limits to Infinity tutorial to help one of my students. So here are three practice questions that you can do to test whether you understand Limits to Infinity. So if you already know them, feel free to have a go at it and then come back when you're done. Um, otherwise, you can um, listen to the instructions for how to do them and then maybe do a question on it. So, um, if you have gone through my previous Infinity tutorial, um, you would know that when we're um, evaluating limits, a very useful thing to do is to graph the equation in GeoGebra and so I'm going to show you the graph of this first equation. So here is the graph of the equation 5x squared plus 1 over 4x squared minus 2. And what is the question? Well, the question is, as x approaches infinity, what does y approach? So if you have a look, if I zoom out, if I um, keep zooming out on the graph, and I... Um, move to the right basically we're looking for as x gets bigger and bigger what does the y value become okay and you can see here the line pretty much goes horizontal over here so whatever the y value is um, for this line is pretty much the answer so if I zoom in a little bit on the line, I can see here the line becomes pretty flat at y equals uh, 1.25. Okay, so if I draw a line y equals 1.25, right, this line that the graph um, keeps approaching pretty much stops at this line y equals 1.2. So the answer is y equals the answer is 1.2, right? Because as x approaches infinity, okay, as x gets bigger and bigger, y stops at 1.2. So the answer is 1.2. The question is, how do we then? How do we work it out? Geo, uh, sorry. How do we work it out algebraically? Because you don't really have GeoGebra with you during a test. Okay, you might have a graphics calculator that you can use, but it takes a very long time to type in equations. So, um, the way to do it algebraically is Step 1. Divide every term by the highest power of x in the denominator. Okay, what does that mean? Well, if we have a look at the denominator of the fraction, which is the bottom of the fraction, the highest power of x is x squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide every single term in this fraction by x squared. So it's 5x squared divided by x squared plus 1 divided by x squared over 4x squared divided by x squared minus 2 divided by x squared. Okay, if you're not sure why you can do this, I'll just give you a quick explanation. So, for example, let's say I had a fraction, let's say 3 over 7. Okay, um, if you want, you can divide both the top and the bottom number by a number, another number, so for example, if I divide the top number by 3 and the bottom number by 3, then I will get 3 over 3 over 7 over 3. And this will still give me the same fraction because it will be 3 over 3 divided by 7 over 3, which is 3 over 3 times 3 over 7 and then it will be 9 over 21 which is the same as 3 over 7 so you're allowed to divide every single term in the top and the bottom by the same number okay if you have no idea what I just said then um, oh good luck with the rest 
Okay, so I'm just gonna delete this. So continuing with this, I'm now going to simplify the terms using index laws. So that will be my step two. So then I have x squared divided by x squared, which cancels down to one. And then I have x squared divided by x squared, which is one. And so if I write out my simplified fraction, it becomes five plus one over x squared, All right? It's just five because five times one over one is just five over four times one over one is just four minus two over x squared. So that's step two done. And now we're going to go on to step three. Step three is when you have x in the bottom of the fraction, it equals zero. So what does that mean? Well, let's look for terms where x is in the bottom of the fraction. This one has an x in the bottom of the fraction and this one has an x in the bottom of the fraction. So all you have to do is to delete this term and make this whole term equal to zero. Right, we don't mind, we don't care if it's x squared, x cubed, or x, whatever power of x on the bottom, as long as there's an x on the bottom, in step three, it equals zero. So why is that? This is because if you have one, uh, whatever number you want, let's say 20, it doesn't matter, when you divide by a very large number, so let's say you divide it by two million, right it equals it pretty much always gives you a v number very close to zero so therefore if you're dividing one by infinity because x is approaching infinity if you're dividing one by infinity squared then you're dividing one by a very large number so the answer is going to be zero so that turns into zero that turns into zero so the answer is five over four Okay, so that is the answer of that one. Okay, hopefully that helps you a little bit. Follow these three steps and see if you can do the other two questions. Okay, so the second question, I'm going to divide every single term by x squared over 4, oh, sorry, not x squared, divided by x because the um, highest power of x in the denominator is just x. So I'm dividing everything by x. And then I'm using index laws to simplify. So then I have 3x squared over x, so that's 3x. 4x over x, so that's 4. So the answer is 3x plus 1 over x over 4 minus 2 of x. So um, 1 over x is 0, 2 over x is 0. 3 times x over 4 is the answer. So remember x is in approaching infinity. So if you have infinity times 3 over 4, the answer is still infinity right because it's still a very big number so it's undefined okay so that is the answer 3 times infinity over 4 is still infinity so it's undefined undefined is infinity same thing so actually I'll just add undefined okay so let's do the third one So, um, actually, I should have done this earlier on, but um, you actually have to copy down the limit symbol at the beginning of the equation until you actually substitute in the x value. So, right now, we haven't substituted in x equals infinity, so I'm just going to copy down this symbol so it's... Uh, 6x squared over x cubed plus 3 of, oh, sorry, minus 
3 over x cubed over 5x cubed over x cubed plus 2 over x cubed. Okay, and if I continue with that, then um, if I simplify it with the index laws, that becomes 6 over x minus 3 over x cubed over 5 plus 2 over x cubed. Now, after you substitute in x is approaching infinity, 6 divided by infinity is 0, 3 divided by infinity is 0, then we have 5 plus 0, so the answer is 0 over 5, which is 0. Okay, so these are the three different types of questions you can get uh, when you are doing limits. Okay, I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, good luck with it. Bye.